This quick tutorial will teach you some best practices to organizing your Binding of Isaac Repentance mod. When it comes to bigger projects that add more than just one or two features, it's important to keep everything organized so that editing and implementing things doesn't become a chore later on. Many people have different ways of doing this, so I'm only going to be showing you how I organize my mods and the best practices that come along with organization in general. This video will be a bit more open-ended and assumes you have a solid understanding of Lua already. Here, I already have an Isaac mod set up. Examining it, you'll see a folder I named scripts. Basically, instead of putting all of my code in main.lua, I've split up each feature into its own Lua file. This mod has four different Lua files, each one with code to display different text on the screen. In my scripts folder, I can add as many subfolders as I want. So for example, I could have a folder named utility for all of the Lua files that simply provide helpful functions and utility code. While I could have another folder named items where I put all of the Lua files for each item in my mod. Right now, I'm showing what the file structure looks like for my mod, the sheriff. You can have as many folders and Lua files as you want, and isolating features into their own Lua files can really help the project stay organized, as you won't have to sift through a huge 1000 line main.lua file, and instead can just look at your project and go to the file with the appropriate name of what feature it implements. With this philosophy, we should only use main.lua as a way to set up our mod and run all of our files. In fact, many mods actually make their mod reference variable a global which makes it more convenient to add functions that should be accessed by all files and to hook callbacks. If you're going to be making the mod reference a global, which is what I've done, please don't make anything else a global. Just one uniquely named global is fine, but global variables can be accessed by any mod at any time, so you want to minimize them to prevent conflicts. Opening up the main.lua of the mod here, there's two ways to run other Lua files. The first way, which is the way I personally recommend, is using the include global function. Writing include, then typing the path to the Lua file relative to the main.lua will run that Lua file. Note here that you can use either a period or a forward slash to denote a directory. I mainly see people use periods, but there's no wrong option here. Also, make sure you do not include the file extension at the end of the file as include already assumes a Lua file. All right, now I'm gonna include the rest of the first three files and go in game and see if it worked. I'll include the fourth one later. In game, you can see text on the screen with each text numbered corresponding to the file. If I go back to my code and comment out the second file's include statement, and then run Lua mod and the name of the mod's directory in the console, you'll see that the file is no longer run and that text is never rendered. While include can definitely work in any situation, there's another way to run files called require. The key difference between require and include is that files ran with require are cached in the environment. This means that they can be required multiple times in any file, and all of the variables inside will persist across requires, unlike include, where each include basically runs a separate copy of the file. This does come with a caveat though, which is that Lua mod will not affect files ran with require. Okay, now that I've covered a way to organize your mod, I want to go over type annotations. To best demonstrate this, I'm going to open that fourth file we didn't include earlier. This file will render the name of a player's character above their head. You may notice this fancy looking comment here. This is known as a type annotation. When using the Isaac API and Lua Visual Studio Code extensions that I recommended in the second tutorial in this series, you can actually add type checking to any argument or file. This is just another way of saying that Visual Studio Code will know exactly what the argument is meant to give you and therefore will give you autocomplete for it as shown here when I type dot position. Removing the type annotation, you can see I no longer have this luxury. There's many different types of annotations that you can use, and I implore you to go over them all yourself by checking the link in the description. But for now, just know that you can use dash 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 
at param, then the name of the argument you want to target and the name of the type that it should be treated as. The best part of annotations is that they're technically just comments, meaning that having them doesn't affect the code at all. If I include the file in our main.lua here and then open the game, you'll see that I now have text hovering over my head after I run Lua mod. And that's it for this one. Hopefully this taught you some good practices when it comes to organizing your mod. Remember that there's no right or wrong answer to how you structure your mod, but you should always make sure it's formatted in a way that you'll be able to immediately understand, even coming back to the project months later. Goodbye.